everyone. Today I'm starting with my Christmas card series for this year and I'm starting what is probably my favorite stamp of this series. It's this beautiful poinsettia background stamp from the tan. I love poinsettias, I love to color them and especially for this stamp set you really can use many different coloring mediums. However, I decided to use three different brands of brush markers and I will be coloring the different parts of the poinsettia with a different marker just to compare them and see how they work. And also in this video, I decided to use two types of cardstock, Bristol and watercolor, simply because I saw other crafters praising the Bristol cardstock and how great it works with especially Zix. But I often have troubles with brush markers and Bristol cardstock. So I'm trying to a little bit experiment this Christmas. Anyways, let's get started. To stamp the poinsettia, I used the Tim Holtz stamping platform. I bought it especially for the background stamps. The regular Misty was just too expensive for me and I don't use the big stamping platform too often. I usually stick with the mini Misty or acrylic blocks. Off camera, I removed the backing paper from the stamp and I placed it on the platform. I didn't place it right next to the edges. I just think it needs more room. And one thing I don't like about this particular stamping tool there are no measuring marks on the gray base. So if you need to put the cardstock off to the side and you need to either restamp or use a background stamp like this, you really need to work out where to place it. I tried using repositional adhesive, but it just would not hold on the watercolor cardstock. It was moving around like I didn't have any adhesive on it. I decided to use some washi tape and non-permanent marker to get the right position. If you have the creative corners from Misty, I think that would be a great option to get the position of the cardstock right. Because I was going to heat emboss, I first treated the cardstock with the anti-static powder tool. For some crafters, this is not really important, but for me, this is a must. I live in Ireland and here is super humid, especially at this time of the year. And if I forget to use the anti-static powder, Often the embossing powder stick everywhere on the card. In many cases you can brush it off, but not every time. I used the Versamark ink and I inked up the stamp. I closed the door and I was very happy that the cardstock didn't move. So I was able to restamp and I restamped twice. For the heat embossing, I used the metallic brass embossing powder from WOW and I sprinkled it across the panel. The stamping wasn't really great in the middle and the powder wasn't holding. But after the coloring is done, you don't really see it. Then I heat set it using my heat tool to make sure all powder is melted. I try to tilt the paper so that the light is reflecting on it and I see where the powder is uh, melting and where it is still dark. I did the same on the Bristol cardstock and then I started with coloring. Here I will start with the coloring on the Bristol cardstock. I picked my colors. As I said, I will be using water brush markers from three different brands. The first red leaves will be colored with the Zig brush markers. Then the second red leaves will be colored with the Koi brush markers from Sakura. The reds do not really go together, but to be honest, I have the set of 24 colors from the Zig brush markers and I don't have any similar reds in the pack anyway. I will also use yellows from the Koi brush markers to color the middle. And lastly, I will be using brush markers that are one of those brandless items. I saw two sellers on Amazon selling them and I will be using them on the green leaves and on blue background. I will speed up the video now and play some Christmas music and I will be back once I'm done. <music> Thank you. 
So the first point city is finished and not to make the video super long, I will just quickly swoop through the coloring on the watercolor cardstock. It's a hot pressed watercolor cardstock, so it's a very smooth and the coloring is pretty much the same. I just want to quickly talk about what I observed while coloring and I also want to talk about what I found best using these markers. First of all, I don't think the brush markers are the best coloring medium for this stamp set. It is just too large and I think using normal watercolors would have been much better. However, definitely among the different brands of the markers, there was not much of a difference. And I think the watercolor cardstock is slightly better. But the issues I had with the Bristol cardstock, I also had with the watercolor cardstock. The main issue I have with these watercolor markers is if I don't go in with the water brush immediately, I find it very difficult to spread the color around, especially on the Bristol cardstock. The best way that worked for me to apply the color with the marker, I used the water brush and I spread the color doing sort of strokes from bottom to top. When that didn't work, I spread the color around in a circular motion first and then I did the strokes to get even color. Also, for the bigger leaves, sometimes the top of the flower was too pale. And for those, I just swiped the water brush on the brush of the marker to pick up a little bit of color and then I applied it onto the leaf. And if you want, you can also apply a second layer. I saw other crafters doing it. First, they applied lighter color and then they applied darker color. One thing I definitely noticed when using the brush markers, I need to heat emboss. I tried it without heat embossing and it always seeps outside of the lines. And lastly, I have better luck with flowers than other images. So these are the main observations. Keep in mind, I'm not good at coloring. I'm still learning. I would need to make few more cards with different mediums and cardstock to really know what works and what doesn't. I will leave a few links in the description below to other crafters who I usually watch to improve my own coloring. Maybe I will do a bonus video if I have time at the end of the series using normal watercolors as well. Anyways, for the sentiment, I used the Merry Christmas border die from Lawn Fawn. I mentioned in my last haul video that I have similar dies from Clearly Besotted, but those are two separate dies. I made few cards with those and you can see them on my blog, but then I decided to buy this die as it's more simple to adhere. I die cut the sentiment from a white cardstock from Paper Mill Direct and then I heat embossed it using the same embossing powder I used on the flower. I just wanted to match the embossing and I didn't have any cardstock in metallic copper color. I dabbed the die cut in a Versamark ink. First one half of the die cut, then I covered it with the embossing powder, melted it with my heat gun, I let it cool down for a few seconds and then I repeated the process on the other half of the sentiment. I adhered the sentiment on the bottom part of the panel with the poinsettia. I used the Zig two-way glue pen and I also used my ruler to make sure I'm adhering it in a straight line. Then I placed two acrylic blocks on top of it and let it dry. I also heat embossed the little dot above the eye, but I managed to lose it because I didn't want to fiddle with it again and heat emboss. I decided to use the golden colors from Kuretake to create a dot above the eye and I think it worked well. If you have the right color of the newer drops, you can use that as well. And lastly, I adhered the panel directly on top of the card base. To adhere it, I used a thin double-sided tape along the sides of the panel to make sure it is adhered on the card base properly. And also, when I don't use the rectangular stitch die to cut out the panel, I always cut the panel down about 2 to 3 millimeters. This way, it is easier to adhere it on top of the card base. Here you can see the cards side by side. The one on the bottom is the Bristol cardstock and the one on top is the watercolor cardstock. And to be honest, I don't really see major differences. I actually had troubles when taking photos of the cards to tell them apart. If you have any tips of using the brush markers and the cardstock which you use, please share it in the comments below. I hope you liked this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. And if you are new to this channel, I hope you'll subscribe because I still have 11 Christmas cards to go so you don't want to miss it. You can also follow me on Instagram and check out my blog as well for more inspiration. On the screen on the left, you should see an option to view my first Christmas cards from last year. I did some Distress Ink stamping then 
And on the right, you can also access the playlist with my Christmas cards. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!